We were going to talk about some of the, at the national level, what's happening with arts funding. Yeah. Uh, there's so many gaps to fill. Well, you know, we have, um, we have a wonderful national endowment for the arts and a national endowment for the humanities. And those are where the majority of national federal dollars are being put um, for arts activities and things like that. Um, it's a wonderful, um, it's a wonderful resource for us and we're really, I think most of us in the arts community are pretty happy that um, those dollars are available. Um, they have a lot of different programs though. Um, they're funding um, arts education. They're funding placemaking and collaborative work um, for, um, they're not funding um, concrete and, and, you know, the capital improvements, but they are funding how do you get people to come together, talk about a project, um, and collaborate and, and find um, the community engagement part of that. Um, and then they're also funding um, it, kind of the initial initial um, drawings of, of some of the more capital improvement projects. So, so we're looking at, um, and those are called our town grants. They're also funding a lot of um, rural um, and what they call Challenge America grants. And those are smaller grants of about $10,000 that are um, being um, offered into more rural communities um, for arts projects. And they, I think they understand on a national basis, we're all not sitting in urban you know, core communities. Um, and this is, it was really important for them to be able to reach into, um, into smaller communities and be able to provide some of the dollars that, that are you know, necessary to produce produce um, really um, quality merit-based art projects. So it is very competitive um, and that's one of, and they fund local arts organizations such as the Arts Council. Um, but they do, you know, there's a, a folk, um, there is writers grants, there are um, grants for just arts projects, film festivals can be a part of this. So if you have a really wonder, you know, if there's a really wonderful program that, that you're, um, you know, producing, national and federal dollars are absolutely available to you. So they range you know, again, from about ten thousand dollars up to you know maybe a hundred, um, you know, two hundred thousand dollars. It depends on your project, depends on the caliber of your organization. Very, very competitive, though. So um, I think the last round of local age arts agency grants. Um, there were, um, you know, 500, you know, applications, and about two, about half of them were funded. So, very, very competitive process. Um, the National Endowment for the Humanities also has um, pro um, project-oriented grants. I'm not as familiar with that, but certainly um, grants are available to to do projects throughout the the country. Um, and I would certainly investigate that. If you're more of a library or museum, there are, there are grants available through that institution, um, and that's a, those are very, comp again, very competitive um, application processes. Um, I don't know if Josh talked about the state grants, um, but through uh, Michigan Council for Arts and Cultural Affairs, there are larger grants available. We do a mini grant program, you know, locally here. Um, but um, there are capital improvement grants that can be used for um, equipment or for a new building, um, up to $100,000. There are arts and education artist residency grants where an artist can go into a school environment and do a project with the school. So um, based on how many hours they're spending, um, those are um, around $20,000 grants. There are arts project grants and then operational grants, which is something that the Arts Council um, receives. Based on your budget, how much, how, you know, how, what's that worth? Um, probably anywhere between 20 and 40, 40 or 50 thousand dollars. The Michigan Council for Arts and Cultural Affairs, is, uh, is, as some of you may recognize, um, about 15 years ago, had maybe 10 years ago, had a very wonderful budget of, of close to $25 million. Um, in 2008 or 9, um, it was reduced to um, a very small, um, a small amount, about $1 million. Um, and, and that was based on the economic changes that were happening, you know, within state government. 
Um, it has slowly, it, it is slowly increasing. We're up to um, almost 11 million um, right now, maybe 10 million. Um, so there's still, you know, even based on what we had a few years back, it's still not of the caliber that we are looking for. So as arts advocates, we are always looking to try to increase not only our state budget for arts and cultural grants, but our national um, national endowment and, and the humanities grant dollars as well. So, um, and it's it's based on us. It's based on us helping to you know talk to our legislators and, and help get those dollars into into budget. So. Um, but so so th those dollars are available on an annual basis, usually at the state level. Um, the national level, there are probably two or three different deadlines um, available. So you'd have to do some research and find out what kind of connects to you um, and where you can go after some of those dollars. But um, all are very competitive. I keep reiterating that it's a very important, um, you just, if you write it, it just doesn't necessarily come to, to bear that you're going to get those dollars. And, and um, a lot of us have been rejected um, and a lot of us have, have been very successful. So um, I I want to make sure that that's um, pretty clear. You've also got, you know, availability of a lot of the foundations that are, um, you know, in the country right now that um, are funding probably more so geographically. So if you're in the right community um, and you connect to that foundation, which are private foundations, sometimes that's um, a bigger pot of dollars um, that you, you're, you know, you can go after from a granting situation too. So, um, so it just depends on where you live and 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 how much you're looking for and, and um, what kind of projects you have and then how well you write your application. Um, so, and that's really important um, to kind of the overall, the overall picture of grant writing. I know when I have looked at things like the National Endowment for the Humanities and think how great my project would fit with them and then I realized, hmm, Ken Burns gets money from there. I mean, there are very big name people Absolutely. who are at the national level competitive. So I suspect most artists start, don't they, locally and then they move up the they, food chain? They do start locally. Um, a lot of arts council, we're an arts council that provides dollars. Um, we've been very fortunate um, to be able to put um, a significant amount of dollars into an endowment account through the community foundation and through um, another um, another um, investment account. Um, we have close to two million dollars that are um, invested and we use the interest off of that to do the granting on an annual basis. A lot of arts councils don't have that behind them um, and so they count on the state dollars or local foundations to actually do some of that work for them. So, but. We're fortunate that we had, a, um, at one point in time during the 50 year history of this organization, we had a building. Um, the building wasn't, um, didn't have the, the, it wasn't working for us and we ended up being a landlord of that building and it wasn't really, it was an old gas station that got turned into a performing arts center and a gallery. Um, we ended up selling that um, and that's where the, do and, and the dollars um, that were, um, um, that, that we gained from selling that building that now was turned into a parking lot. Um, um, went into that endowment. And so we were, you know, we have a longer history, a longevity. Um, so we were able to, you know, we were, uh, I think, looking to what kind of investment do we want to make. And what our board finally came up with was we really want to invest back into the community. If we're going to get rid of this piece of, the, you know, what we're doing, how can we start to put, how can we start to fund individual artists, how can we fund the organizations? How do we fund educators? How do we fund students to actually create impact within our community? So um, very fortunate um, that a few of the arts councils around the state um, have some of those dollars and are able to then fund some of the arts projects. If you don't have a local arts agency though in your community, the Community Foundation, um, which almost every community in Michigan at least has, um, would be maybe a first stop. Um, the United Way sometimes will fund arts and cultural projects, sometimes not. I mean, it's a long shot, but sometimes if you can connect it to a social issue, senior citizens, teenagers, um, autism, it just depends on how you how you you know how you place the the project and who you want to work with um, during that. So, um, so I think that some of those are um, important on a local basis to to actually um, gain trust. 
a lot of, again, a lot of local foundations that are based on private dollars are there to help support arts and culture as well. So I would certainly investigate um, um, here, there's the DART Foundation, there's the, um, the Ari Olds um, Foundation. Um, some of those are, are very interested in funding um, quality projects. Um, they're very limited in how much money they, they have to give, but um, you know, you never know when your, your project is the one that, that's going to get funded. What are the big names and foundations at the national level for the arts? Um, well, a lot of them are, you know, some of them are based here in Michigan. Kresge Foundation, um, the W.K. Kellogg Foundation, um, the Knight Foundation, um, and, uh, you know, there, it's just, from an arts and cultural standpoint, they fund totally different things. I mean, it, so one is about infrastructure. They want to see, you know, historic theaters renovated. You know, they want to see, they want to see that, that you're building the biggest performing arts center or the most contemporary art museum, and they're willing to put their dollars kind of at the end of the process. They want to see how you leverage those dollars, um, but they're they're you know they're putting those dollars into place so that that large large infrastructure can be built for the arts. Then you have a lot of foundations that are really interested in um, diversity and, and building new audiences for the arts. So the millennials are important. The you know the is it black or white? Is it who's coming to your who's coming to your shows? Um, and so a lot of them have, you know, the, again, there's a, a more social issue um, at play and they're looking to try to build that. Um, there's a wonderful organization called Grant Makers in the Arts. Um, they are based out of, I believe, Seattle. Um, and they are a, um, it's a membership organization of foundations around the country that have joined in this Grant Makers in the Arts group. Um, and they are kind of setting the trends um, for what's being funded currently, um, what kinds of projects, and, and it's all these grant makers coming together to talk to each other. So they know, they know in New York they're doing something, they know in California somebody's doing something else, they know in you know, Salt Lake City somebody's doing something, and they can start to work off of each other. And it's really an important, but they are setting the trends of what's next. What are the, what are the 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 issues? What are the things that we should be concerned with? Um, veterans affairs, um, senior citizens, aging, um, you know, uh, new new audiences for the arts, and and so they're 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 looking at this together as a group, and that's where that's where we see changes start to happen in funding processes and and in what's happening, you know, what what we're doing and what we should be focused on um, in a community level. So if we listen well enough. Um, they will help us set kind of the next goals for, for our own organizations in the future. One challenge, I think, in the post-economic crisis world is that uh, even endowed organizations, some of which took a serious bath with mm -hmm. the basket of stocks or yeah. holdings that they had, is that when you talk about an endowment and living off the interest, interest rates now are historically low. And at the same time, we're seeing that in the past where you would maybe see a 10% return in stocks. Mm -hmm. So if you have a million dollar endowment, it doesn't mean that much in terms of actual dollars you can expend that year. Right. We're Because we're local, and we're only serving three counties in the state of Michigan, it's significant though. And and I think that's the key. Yes, you're right. We're, we're not making as much as we, we hope, um, but we're making something still. There's still dollars that are coming into the organization where we're able to to send them back out into the field. Um, we have that $2 million endowment um, allows us to put about $13,000 in Chris Clark Fellowship, which are our professional development dollars, allows us to put about $8,000 on an annual basis into our individual artist grants. It allows us to put five or $6,000 into our Young Creatives program um, for scholarships for those with financial need, the youth um, in our community. Um, so it's it really is putting is putting a significant amount that wouldn't come from any other place um, into into the the woodwork at this point, and I think those are it's still from a local standpoint it still feels very significant to this community. So we'd love to have more though. <laughs> 
We, you know, we've moved away from a lot of our funding for, to um, arts and cultural organizations, which have other other places where they can go get some of these dollars. The state requires that you're a 501c3 organization. I mean, they put some they put some stipulations on those dollars. Um, but we found that we were not funding the art. I mean, at the very core of what we do is the artist, the musician, the visual artist, the potter, the jewelry maker, the you know the actor, um, the dancer. And what we found was we really wanted to fund the the, the core of, of who we were. And um, putting just a few dollars into play really does take them to the next level. Um, and I'll tell you a quick story. One of our first individual artist grants was to Craig Mitchell Smith. Um, Craig is a glass artist. He started in theater, though. He was a scenic designer. He did a little bit of painting. Wasn't sure of where he was going. Um, and one of the very first grants that we did, it was $1,000. So it was, I mean, to you and me, that's nothing. Um, to an artist, that's the world. And that was probably a lot of his income for that, that, that first year. So, um, so anyway, so he, um, he took that $1,000 and he, cre he had an idea of creating um, glass flowers. Um, and he wanted to um, go over down to the um, Women's um, Historical Center. Um, and he created a, an, an entire exhibit, a one-day exhibit. Um, and he did, I think, 13, 13 pieces were in the installation. Um, and from that moment, when people came and saw that, it was his career took off. And he credits, continually credits, the Arts Council, which is just a very moving story um, with his survival. He's now, I would say he's a multimillionaire. He is um, starting a, um, he's got a, um, a glass studio um, here in the Old Town area. He has a um, shop on the main street in the Old Town area. He's um, been approached. He's now have had shows at Epcot um, during the flower show. Um, he has gone overseas. He's um, been asked to create a glass studio in Sri Lanka. Um, his career has taken off, and he is probably the next um, Dale Chihuly for, in my book. Um, Craig is is as has the quality to become, you know, kind of the next glass artist that is being really looked at. And he's here in the Lansing area, and it started with a thousand dollars and a thousand dollar grant. So you just never know where the next, you know, the next. The next artist will come from. You never know how it will impact your community until you go after some of those dollars and 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 somebody says you can do this, and it was and, and it's quality. So that's where we're that's where we're kind of at at the Arts Council at this point. And why I would suspect he gives back. Absolutely, absolutely. It does to the entire circle. community. Yeah. 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 It's a wonderful community. Yeah. I think the arts community is a very supportive community that really tries to help everyone succeed. Yeah, they're you know they work off of each other and they know each other, um, and it's just it is a different environment for them. But when one succeeds, the others try harder. So and and you know you're you know the America's dream is to make it. You know so. Um, starting with that that small amount of dollars and, and being able to say now I'm you know I have a beautiful home I have two a studio I have a store I have you know he he made it so and that's really the the key but others look at him and are you know just really want to you know follow in his in his footsteps and all might not want to do that but they're at least inspired by that. Any closing advice you would give to young scholars who are going to make a career out of grant writing and working and maybe at, you know, trying to bring in those six-figure grants for an art organization? Um, yeah, keep it simple. I, I think, you know, when writing grants, and I've written a lot of applications, no, and I've reviewed a lot of applications, which is probably, um, I would say, my best advice to you is to, is to go and to start reviewing applications. Um, you learn all of the tricks of the trade, and you know what you like and what you don't like. Um, you know how to say it's simplistic instead of putting all of the, you know, the the hype behind it. We don't need exclamation points, and we don't need we don't need um, the bull um, part of that. Um, you just need to write as succinctly as possible and as simply as possible. Reviewers 
need to know your organization. They need to know who you are. They need to know what you believe in and how passionate you are about it. But make it simple. The facts, ma'am, that's what you're trying to put. You know, what's the schedule of activity? Make sure your budget matches your, your narrative. Um, make sure it balances, you know, in the first place. Um, but make it simple. And, and don't, if, if you write a complicated um, application, um, sometimes the reviewers who are, it's very subjective to those of us who review grants, if you don't tell us everything that we need to know and as simply as possible, we won't understand it and we won't fund it. So it's really important that you, you, know, you stick to, if there's questions on the application, write the question and answer the question. That's, that's key. And so many applications that I've, that I've reviewed, they, they don't answer any of the questions. And it's like, why did they even bother? So look at the questions, answer the questions directly. Um, and if, if it's only a couple of sentences, it's okay. You don't have to do, you don't have to do a whole page worth. Um, but introduce us to your organ, you know, to introduce us to the topic first. So make sure there's always a very clear summary at the top about who you are, who you serve, what's your mission, um, and, and what you plan on doing. So make sure that there's a summary because that's the first thing I'm going to read. I don't want you to jump into you know, an application and, and the questions first. I don't even know who you are, truthfully. So that's really an important piece of the, uh, piece of the equation. But follow the guidelines, read everything, underline how, you know, how, 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 many, how big of a margin, how big of a font size, what they're looking for exactly. And I think, you know, I think if you follow some of that and you have a quality, you know, quality product that you want to produce, um, th those things will start to be looked at and be funded. So, but it's a it's a very competitive world. So um, I guess I, I give I, I wish you uh, lots of luck. <laughs> um, and uh, it's but it's a it's a very rewarding when those dollars come through. It's very rewarding to know that um, nonprofit or other arts organizations are going to be funded through something that you've you've helped create.